Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now we took a look back at the GTX 750 Ti and how it handles itself in 2018 quite recently. So I think it's only fair we look back at another iconic piece of hardware that was very popular among tech enthusiasts, myself included, and something that will always hold a special place in my heart. I am of course talking about Intel's Pentium Anniversary Edition G3258. Released four years ago in the second quarter of 2014, this particular chip was celebrated for its excellent price to performance and overclocking potential. Some sites even compared its performance to top tier i7s of the time, in terms of how it handled specific games. These days though, it's a different story. See, a lot of titles utilise a lot more cores and threads now. With just two cores and two threads then, the G3258 was destined to eventually be doomed, quicker than some, including myself, would have liked. But is 2018 the year that it finally meets its maker? Well, some would argue that happened long ago, yet finding one of these can still be quite difficult with some being listed for silly money. Sure it doesn't sound that capable anymore, but it still seems very popular among people who might like to collect certain hardware. For today's video, I've dug out my old MSI H81 MP33 board, 8 gigs of RAM, and of course bought another G3258. This one I found for £32, quite close to me. I've also overclocked this one to an easily achievable 4 GHz. Amateur figures for some of these, though a sensible round number that should be doable by most on even the stock cooler. So brace yourselves, because we're jumping right in at the deep end, into what is probably the last ever look at this old thing. So the first thing I had to do was set this up like a brand new PC, and I thought, that's the perfect opportunity to test how this thing functions on a day-to-day -day basis. Does it still seem as snappy and as quick as I remember in everyday usage, like internet browsing, everything like that? And to be honest, it certainly does. I overclocked it straight away. I didn't even give it a chance to run at 3.2 gigahertz. I just fired on the system, checked that it actually worked, shut the system down, overclocked it, and then restarted everything. And everything just ran pretty much perfectly it's quite a snappy system overall with the 8 gigs of ram i showed you a single stick of ram in that uh, bit of footage back then but i did swap it out for dual channel memory two sticks of four gigabyte 1600 megahertz ram was used today and for the general usage side of things yeah the g3258 certainly still has it if you want to put together an everyday basic system it's fine for that but of course we're not here to talk about the basic functionalities of a PC because we want to see how this thing handles games and to do that, well, we better just jump right in. So I started with Assassin's Creed Odyssey here. Now Assassin's Creed Odyssey actually had an issue when it first came out in that it wouldn't run on uh, non-AVX supported processors. Since then it's seen an update and will now run on uh, said CPUs, the G3258 included. In fact, I've uh, showed you a screenshot here of the game firing up and the G3258 in the system, just so that you can see that it does indeed work fine. Now, I also opened up the graphical settings menu here. Um, I will be going back and updating the drivers. I'm using this with my GTX 1070 so that we can get the absolute best performance out of it. As you can see here, these are the settings that I used. Now, you may notice the lack of an overlay here. The MSI Afterburner overlay is missing. Fear not, it's not missing throughout this entire video just for this footage because whenever I try to use MSI, with this game and record it, Assassin's Creed just crashed to the desktop. It was a pretty nightmarish situation. I tried about 10, 20 times, yet every time I wanted to record with MSI Afterburner enabled, I just could not do it. So I had to get the benchmark figures from Fraps first of all, and then go back and record some footage afterwards. Here we averaged 32 frames per second. I tested a little bit of gameplay as well, and that's ever so slightly more demanding than this benchmark run. And uh, there will be a few stutters here and there as well. When I say a few, I mean, well, quite a lot. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is very CPU intensive indeed. And two cores just don't cut it, unfortunately. 
It's clear to see throughout that the G3258 is certainly a bottleneck when, in use with a card like the 1017, you can't help but wonder what sort of performance gains would I get if I was using something a little more powerful, because it's obvious that this thing is definitely holding us back. That being said, I don't like to badmouth one of my favourite chips of all time, and we're certainly getting playable frame rates in terms of averages, but because of that bottleneck caused by the CPU, there is a lot of stutter, and that seems to be the case in a lot of these modern games. When I tested this last, um, I tested slightly older titles, or ones that weren't as CPU reliant, and it seems that it did okay, but as we move on in the gaming world, as technology progresses and we start to use more cores and more threads, two core, two threaded CPUs will definitely start to struggle more and more, and that's certainly the case with this little fella. I'm not writing it off completely though, because there are still some things it will handle just fine, even if it is maxing out a lot of the time. Battlefield 1 is not one of those titles, although I could have sworn I've run this before with this processor just fine. I even went back into the BIOS and overclocked it to a further 4.3 GHz, and unfortunately I couldn't get this to run smoothly. I don't know what was going on here, because as I say, I think I've had it running okay, but as you can see in the top left corner, the processor is maxed out at 100% and it didn't really move off of that mark. So there certainly is a pretty intensive bottleneck in this situation as well. When it came to playing the Crew 2, well, the CPU handled this one just fine. You'll have to excuse the uh, horrible gameplay footage though, because I was trying to use a keyboard and mouse with this game. I'll admit I usually use a controller, um, because the controls aren't really the easiest in the world. But, if you put that aside, if you ignore that terrible gameplay, then... In terms of pure performance, the G3258 handled the game rather well, 1080p medium settings here, and we maintained a pretty smooth frame rate throughout. There will be a few instances of stutter, particularly when you switch vehicles, but for the most part, and considering the overall size of the game, you'll have a pretty decent experience overall. Now these last two games, performed okay, but you're going to see a lot of stutter on the recording. It's going to make the games look a lot worse than they actually appeared in real life. Why is this? Well, I wanted to try something a bit different here. Now, a big part of my everyday sort of PC usage is recording footage, and a lot of you always ask me what are the best programs to use. Well, a lot of NVIDIA and AMD cards have software called Shadowplay or Relive that let you capture gameplay internally. And I used to do this a lot when I had my Pentium G3258 and 750Ti combination. So I thought I'd give it a go here and see how well the CPU handles that. As you can see, despite the 1070's capability of recording gameplay without any frame loss, the processor certainly meant that the outcome was a rather laggy one. Now this won't occur in every single game, but I just wanted to see how well it could handle it, and unfortunately, if you are planning on any content creation, stuff like that, then it will be a bit hit and miss. Some games will be recorded absolutely fine, there will be no slowdown when you play the videos back. But here, in uh, games like Rainbow Six Siege, for example, whatever you do, the game will be recorded at about 16 to 20 FPS for some reason. Now this will hinder your overall production quality, of course, if you do intend to make videos, and I thought I'd bring this to you guys' attention, just in case you are thinking about buying the G3258 for a cheap content creation PC or something like that. I thought it was definitely worth pointing out at least, because it is another flaw, so to speak, in using this processor with modern titles. I then did the same thing with PUBG, recorded internally to see how the CPU handled it, and the thing is, PUBG ran pretty well overall using this processor. I was quite surprised by the outcome. However, when we attempted to record it with Shadowplay again, as you can see, the recording was all over the place, very stuttery, and it was not smooth at all, but I'd like to reiterate that actual gameplay was fine. It was fairly smooth. There will be a few frame drops, obviously, due to the two cores and two threads, but it did a lot better than I initially thought it would do. To conclude, the G3258 in 2018, even when overclocked, can be a hit-and-miss experience. In some instances, it will still have you thinking, wow, I can't believe it can do that, 
and in others it will leave you thinking, well, I wish I bought something else. It really is a totally mixed experience, but I think you'll find that in a lot of modern titles, two cores will cause a little bit of a struggle. Not just the two cores, but the two threads. Because as I said before, the G4560 with its two cores and four threads will handle modern titles a lot better than this one. And that would certainly be the one to buy, although prices of that are certainly overinflated at the moment too. In fact, the G3258 is still going for over £100 or dollars in a lot of instances because it is sort of regarded as a little bit of a collector's item, I think, and can be quite hard to come by these days. It's probably not the best idea to buy one anymore, and it pains me to say that, what with being one of my all-time favourites, but it seems the G3258 has a trickle of life left in it, and it will still surprise you in some games, put it that way, but overall, it's probably best avoided these days, and unfortunately, I think that will be the last time we take a look at this. Nonetheless, let me know if you're still using one of these in your system and how well it performs. Battlefield 1, I'd like to mention again because I don't think that was quite right. I will be doing some more testing and updating you in the comments, but I couldn't seem to get it past that 15 FPS. Um, as I said, let me know if you still use one of these. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.